Yes, everybody, welcome back to another episode of the United Twins with myself, CM, and my twin bro, Cappy, on the other line. Today, we're going to speak about Manchester United's loss against Arsenal. Blessings to everybody inside, including yourself, Cappy, oh, Arsenal 3, Manchester United 2, and what a game of football that was. Before we even get into that, though. It is time for the Question of the Day That was me? Shut up! So question of the day is just something that we like to do in order to add a bit of fun and of course trivia to the episode At the start of the video right now we're gonna ask you a question and we would love for you guys to Find the answer, put it in the comments if you know it off your head. Just slap it in the comments and get involved. Have a bit of fun. But here is the question, ladies and gents. Manchester United and Nottingham Forest have faced off in three separate occasions in the League Cup. What was the date of our first meeting? An extra points for the scoreline. Hmm. So let us know in the comment section below. And by the end of the video, we will reveal the answers. Over to the game now. First half, Arsenal started quickly at home. I think for them it was almost as if they wanted to make a statement, but it is definitely something that they do on a regular basis, and in the end of the day, they definitely did provide a statement to United. You know, we were always going to take a while to get into the game fully because when it comes to being in possession, in games, that's not our strong suit at the moment, at least for long stretches. The crazy thing about all of that is how we... Managed to take the lead, winning back the ball from Saka and Thomas Partey and it was just brilliant work by Marcus Rashford to get into a position and strike the ball as pure as you ever see. He was able to also break an unwanted record of not scoring in 26 away league games Cappy when starting. So good for him but after it was a story of how either team responded. The thing about Arsenal is they continue to apply pressure and you could really sense within the home crowd when we scored that the belief was still there. Prior to us even scoring, there were scenarios where defensively we didn't seem fully switched on and during the watch along I kept on reiterating that we needed to wake up. Mm. And for Eddie and Kitty's first goal, you could see we gave a little too much space for the cross to go in. And then at the back post, nobody spotted the movement of Enketia until it was too late. By then, it was a free header from point blank range. Game on once again. You know, you guys, in the moment, I was so immersed in the game. But as I sat down and reflected on it afterward, the second half performance was where we went wrong as a team. Mm -hmm. We didn't ask many questions of the home side. Our backline was under constant pressure and you know, even after going behind to a fantastic sack of goal, the only time we looked proactive going forwards was that stretch until we found that equaliser, with Lissandro Martinez scoring his first goal for the club, big up yourself. At that point I was expecting there to be a response or for us to use the momentum of that goal to keep pushing forward, but everything seemed to fall flat after that. Saka hit the post after it deflected off Christian Eriksen and Ketia forced an excellent save from David De Gea later in the proceedings. Say, those were two big warning signs for United to register and it didn't. Luke Shaw said after the game that we were too passive in the second half and it's true. Yeah. On one hand, I feel we can be proud of the players for the game they played up until we scored our second. The mentality they showed to come back from behind and almost hold on to get a point. But after and really in parts before, United in terms of possession based football, control and chance creation lacked in all territories. Defensively, like I said before, we almost held on at the end, but our luck ran out. And as the ball bounced to Enketia, you had a feeling that it was game over. And you never want to be in that position. You want to be in a position where at the end, you're either in a position to win or feel like that you should have won the game and maybe after that second half performance, that wasn't the case. Let us know in the comments section what you think about that. 
I've seen a lot of different opinions on the game while scrolling on socials. Some criticising the decision making of our manager and asking why certain subs or tactical changes weren't made earlier in the game. I've also seen the positive side of things too. In the end of the day, I don't think there's a right or wrong here. There really is to be fair. If you understand where we were at the beginning of this campaign, the growth since then has been night and day. In my opinion, we're still far off in terms of the expectations that a club in Manchester United needs to have, but this will no doubt be another experience to learn from. Same thing really against Palace. We failed to manage the game or get a hold of it in time, and later on, you get punished for not doing a job that all great teams can do 9 times out of 10. Arsenal no doubt are the real deal, but if we want to get there, many things have to change on and off the pitch. Manchester United are far away from that right now. With all of that out of the way, you know what time it is ladies and gents. It's time for the Question of the Day. That was me. Shut up. Roll the clip. Manchester United and Nottingham Forest have faced off in three separate occasions in the League Cup. What was the date of our first meeting? An extra points for the scoreline. If you talk here, like on a bit, subscribe to the channel, you respect the tweet now. Back to the video, answer the thing and hop in the chat. Question time! Question time! Question time! So, how did you fare in this episode's question of the day? Let me reveal the answer right channel. Manchester United and Nottingham Forest first played in the League Cup on the 19th of January 1983. It was a quarter-final tie with United winning 4-0. Goal scorers were Brian Robson, Steve Koppel and two from Gordon McQueen. We actually went on to be runners-up that year, losing to our fierce rivals Liverpool in the final. If you got the answer correct off your memory, slap a one in the chat, you special piece of specimen. If you use Google, slap a two in the chat. Oh, don't be ashamed to use Google. Trust me. Trust me. But if you didn't bother at all, you got a slap a three in the chat. And listen, how many times every week have I got to come back here and tell you to get involved, ladies and gentlemen? It's getting out of hand at this point. But listen, thank you to everybody who's reached the end of this video, watch. And if you have enjoyed, the only thing I'm going to ask of you, maybe the only couple of things I'm going to ask of you is to slap a like on the video and subscribe if you're new. And let me add one more onto that. Share to your friends and frenemies, ladies and gents. In the comment section below, let us know what you think of the game, what you thought of the game, and we will be replying to every single body. That leaves a comment down there, so be sure to do it. And ladies and gents, we will be back midweek, Nottingham Forest semi-final first leg in the Carabao Cup. So be sure to first and foremost check out CM Stay United Watch Along. It will be back for that. And also our reaction to the game, ladies and gents. And then we've got Reading, and then it's the semi-final second leg of the Carabao Cup again. So it's going to be a busy, busy, busy period. And then we'll return to league action. So ladies and gentlemen, have our blessed. Whether it's you're watching it in the night, in the morning, in the evening, or in the afternoon. We'll see you a lot sooner. Be